Hello everyone. I am Dr. Akesh Shivastava, uh, physicist in the Department of Radiology, University College of Medical Sciences, Seoul, on basic concepts of magnetic resonance imaging. MRI plays a very vital role in the patient care. Some of the biggest advantages of MRI is it provides excellent soft tissue pathology. It doesn't need any ionizing uh, radiation and direct imaging in any plane is possible on the basic principle of MRI. MRI is based on nuclear magnetic resonance. This uh, is the interactions of uh, hydrogen nuclei in our body that provides the uh, uh, images based on G1 level of nuclear spin. Objective of this module is after completing this chapter, uh, a reader should be able to understand the position of nuclei in high magnetic field, trace the steps involved in production of uh, magnetic resonance signals, solve the norm Larmor equation to find uh, a resonance frequency and define T1 and T2 relaxation times. The first is that how the interaction of nuclei with a strong static magnetic field takes place. The nuclei of atom with an odd number of protons or neutrons exhibit an intrinsic property called a spin angular momentum, which causes nuclei to spin about its axis. For a non-zero spin quantum number, the nucleus is associated with a magnetic moment and thus poses a magnetic dipole moment like earth has a spin angular momentum which causes earth to spin about its axis and causes day and night rotation and also have magnetic dipole moment. In a simplified way, we may say that nuclei with an odd number of protons or nucleons, neutrons, we have like a tiny magnets. However, in a sample, these nuclei are randomly oriented in absence of magnetic fields, hence there is no net magnetization present in the sample. In MRI, it is assumed that the patient is placed along uh, a Z axis and extended magnetic field is applied along the patient. Hydrogen nuclei are randomly oriented in the patient body. In absence of any magnetic fields, hence there is no magnetization present in the sample and therefore net magnetization is zero. Uh, in this figure, you can see the uh, hydrogen nuclei are randomly oriented and therefore uh, net magnetization uh, present in the sample is zero, which we can say that tissue does not have net magnetization or tissues are not magnetized in absence of any magnetic field. According to law of quantum mechanics, when hydrogen nuclei placed in a strong magnetic field, uh, we call it as uh, V0, the magnetic moment of hydrogen nuclei aligned with this magnetic field parallel or anti-parallel. You can see in this figure some nuclei along the direction of main magnetic field, some of them aligned anti parallel to the main magnetic field. Those which aligned parallel to the main magnetic field are said to be in the lower energy state. On the other hand, those nuclei which aligned anti parallel to the main magnetic field they are said to be in the high energy state. For the nuclei to have some of the uh, nuclei have little uh, more nuclei aligned parallel to the main magnetic field. You can see in this figure uh, the nuclei more nuclei aligned parallel to the main magnetic field than anti parallel to the main magnetic field. The alignment of magnetic movement is measured as the total of the magnetic movement and is expressed as a vector sum. 
this is very small population difference which gives rise to net magnetization in the uh, direction of main magnetic field and therefore the component of all the proton cancelled out and uh, longitudinal magnetization vectors add up an excess of hydrogen nuclei which were uh, along the direction of main magnetic field line up parallel to B0 and create net magnetization vector of the patient. You can see in this figure some more nuclei aligned along the direction of main magnetic field than uh, anti parallel to the to the main magnetic field since proton behave like tiny magnets the exact alignment in external magnetic field of the tiny magnetic moment causes the magnets to precise about the magnetic field you can see in this figure this precisional magnetic field is very interesting it is precision requires uh, a spin angular momentum and the torque perpendicular to angular momentum angular momentum of the nucleus is determined by the spin of unpaired protons uh, and neutrons and by the orbital angular momentum of neutron and proton what is precision the precision is when protons rotate around themselves and also their axis of rotation moves such that it forms a cone like shape this moment of axis of rotation of proton is called uh, precision as you can see here in this figure this precisional motion is uh, the third motion which is uh, now uh, the spin angular momentum is spinning uh, about its axis then there is a dipole moment and uh, magnetic dipole moment and then you have the precisional motion the frequency of this precisional motion is equal to the gamma is uh, is equal to the gamma into uh, b0 this is what is called larval frequency the number of protons of the uh, position of proton per second is called precisional frequency and this is expressed in terms of hertz the gyromagnetic value is a unique value for each type of nucleus for example at one tesla magnetic field the frequency is 42.57 megahertz at 1.5 tesla it is 64 megahertz at 3 tesla it is somewhere around 127.7 megahertz so this 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 is the frequency which is unique for hydrogen nuclei i know other nuclei which uh, which are also present in our body but their larmer frequency is different so hydrogen is unique in this way that it has a high abundance and and therefore uh, you can see now uh, the uh, frequency of precision is very high and therefore uh, the hydrogen nuclei is chosen to produce MR signal in MRI this is very important for us and therefore we can say that the hydrogen nuclei in our body we have like a magnet and uh, th there is a more nuclei aligned along the direction of main magnetic field and therefore there is a net magnetization and uh, these net magnetization is small small nuclei which are processing they are processing but uh, with a frequency 42.58 megahertz with one tesla and these nuclei but they are not processing in phase so what happens is the next point is interaction of nuclei with a strong static magnetic field which is called resonance and excitation what is resonance this resonance is a very important part of mri they, this tells you about the exchange of energy between two system at a specific frequency called resonance it is a phenomena uh, that occurs when a uh, object is exposed to an oscillating perturbation that has a frequency close to its own natural frequency of oscillation and in this 
uh, net magnetization vector is flipped to get information by applying radio frequency pulse perpendicular to the external magnetic field. Uh, the, this RF uh, pulse makes the individual nuclei to process in phase and there is a RF coil to generate the RF pulse that is second magnetic field which must be matched with the larmer frequency of nuclei that is 63.86 megahertz per 1.5 tesla. If RF pulse having frequency equal to larmer frequency of nuclei is applied perpendicular to the external magnetic field it is absorbed by hydrogen protons and, and therefore resonance occur. Now at this point this we can call it as the excitation the nuclei are excited due to resonance uh, uh, excess nuclei excited from lower energy state to high energy state uh, causes excess nuclei aligning towards xy plane that get form transverse magnetization perpendicular to the magnetic field. The rotating angle also known as a flip angle depends upon the RF pulse uh, strength of RF pulse and the orientation and the duration for which the uh, RF uh, frequency is applied. Now you can see uh, a net magnetization is estab est established. This net magnetization is uh, uh, excited, is uh, flipped by applying uh, very high RF pulse and the frequency of RF pulse is matching with the larmer frequency and therefore the net magnetization will be flipped towards transverse plane which is called transverse magnetization. So uh, uh, it is absorbed by the hydrogen proton and resonance occur. Now excitation due to uh, resonance excess nuclei excited from lower energy state to high energy state causes excess alignment towards xy plane. Uh, you can see in the figure uh, the, the net magnetization is flipping up towards the xy plane that gets from transverse magnetization perpendicular to magnetic field. The rotation angle also known as flip angle depends upon the RF pulse strength and its orientation. You can see the uh, uh, hydrogen nuclei are flipped to xy plane and this causes causing transverse magnetization applying the RF pulse. Now uh, this is the flipping of uh, net magnetization uh, towards uh, transverse direction known as transverse magnetization vector and in this figure I have applied 90 degree RF pulse that means the uh, nuclei are flipped by an angle of 90 degree. It can be uh, less than 90 degree or it can be 180 degree depending upon the pulse sequences we choose. Uh, for example, in spin echo this uh, angle is uh, 90 degree for uh, inversion pulse, uh, inversion recovery pulse sequences this angle may be uh, is 180 degree and uh, in uh, gradient recall eco pulse sequences this angle is less than 90 degree. So this flip angle is very important and this flip angle uh, this flipping is done by applying uh, uh, radio frequency which is perfectly matching with the larmer frequency of hydrogen nuclei. Now uh, at this point of time radio frequency pulse is switched off. When the radio frequency pulse is switched off this process called relaxation. It is the process that occur after terminating the RF pulse in which physical changes that were caused by the RF pulse return to the state where from where they were disturbed and that means the relaxation means and recovery of proton back uh, towards the equilibrium position after being disturbed by RF excitation and when the RF pulse is switched off transverse magnetization is uh, reduced which is called transverse relaxation decay of transverse magnetization where longitudinal magnetization uh, increases which is called longitudinal relaxation. So uh, you have two uh, processes that are occurring together uh, almost simultaneously but it is a different process. In one process you have uh, the uh, decay of transverse magnetization. This decay of transverse magnetization is due to uh, uh, loss of phase coherence of uh, hydrogen nuclei which were uh, 
made to process in phase after application of radio frequency pulse now they are going out of phase causing transverse magnetization to decay another process uh, almost simultaneous but different is the uh, return of hydrogen nuclei from uh, uh, from excited state which were uh, you can see uh, in the earlier i have mentioned that the rf pulse made them to uh, flip from uh, low energy state to high energy state so relaxation takes place as i explained uh, takes place by two process almost simultaneous one is called spin lattice relaxation time which is called t1 when rf pulse is switched off proton losing their energy and this energy is given to the surrounding uh, lattice uh, this is why it is called spin lattice relaxation as proton lose their energy the longitudinal magnetization increases hence it is called longitudinal relaxation growth of longitudinal relaxation it is the time for 63 percent of nuclei to return to the lower energy state is called t1 it depends on tissue composition structure and surrounding lattice if the lattice has magnetic field which fluctuate at larger frequency then transfer of thermal energy from uh, proton to the lattice is very easy and therefore is fast and therefore uh, longitudinal magnetization is uh, shorter another type of relaxation is called spin spin relaxation called t2 uh, the nuclei which we are processing in phase because of rf pulse starts losing their phase coherence after the rf pulse is switched off loss of phase coherence by the nuclei cause decay of transverse magnetization it is called uh, decay of transverse relaxation it is the time in which transverse magnetization decays to 37 percent of its original is called 1t1 this uh, 1t2 it depends on the magnitude of external magnetic field and inhomogeneities of total magnetization which uh, within the tissues you can see the t1 relaxation time in which there is a growth of uh, longitudinal magnetization and which is of course called t1 so different tissues have different t1 uh, and depending upon the difference of t1 uh, we get the contrast on mri then uh, another figure is tells you about the decay of uh, transverse magnetization so you can see here the transverse magnetization from uh, the time in which uh, it decays to 37 percent is called transverse magnetization in case of uh, longitudinal magnetization this is the time longitudinal magnetization uh, recovers 60 percent of its original value and you can see now after uh, uh, t1 and t2 we can see what is free induction decay fid the primary mr signal is called free induction decay very fast cannot be measured the signal is set at maximum uh, strength immediately following excitation and decays to zero relaxation process the decay of fid is due to loss of phase coherence of individual spin over time but here uh, it is not only decays due to transverse magnetization or loss of phase coherence of hydrogen nuclei but it's it is because of uh, the combined effect of intrinsic magnetic field immunity and extrinsic magnetic field immunity and both uh, these factor combined and led to uh, decay of uh, mr signal very fast which is called free induction decay now uh, next part is uh, the image reconstruction how do we uh, reconstruct the image in mri we call it, this happens in the steps one is the encoding steps the first is the slice encoding step in this way single slice is excited you can see in this figure this gradient has gradually uh, increasing magnetic field strength from one end to another end it determines the slice position slice thickness is determined by two parameter one is the bandwidth of rf pulse and second is the gradient 
uh, strength along field of view. So this gradient magnetic field if it is applied along z axis one can select the slice along z axis or we can say transverse axial images. So in transverse axial image is uh, selects the slice in the you can see in this figure the gradient magnetic field has been applied along z axis to cause the FO, FOB uh, is uh, to divide in the slices. So this is how we can select the slice by applying the gradient magnetic field along uh, z axis. This slice slit gradient is on at the time of sending the RF pulse slightly before the application of RF pulse. So we can select the slice. So the next is to slice the cut uh, to uh, cut the slices into uh, columns. So uh, first is the phase encoding gradient. Second is the phase encoding gradient. This gradient is turned on for a shorter period of time after slice select gradient is on. Slice select gradient cuts the slices into uh, phase encoding grad gradient cuts the slices into uh, into rows and then uh, this uh, phase encoding uh, gradient exactly is applying along uh, perpendicular to the z axis and this uh, uh, 90 degree RF pulse then switched on gradient uh, turn on and this is applied for a very short period of time at the time then next uh, 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 gradient is on. So before the next gradient is on this slice is cut into rows. Now third step is frequency encoding gradient. This is uh, the cut uh, the slices into columns. This gradient will cause proton in a different vertical columns. So uh, now we have cut the slices first into uh, the FOB is cut into uh, z-axis along the, uh, uh, the cut into slices then slice is cut into uh, rows by applying phase encoding gradient and then uh, the slices are cut uh, further cut into columns by applying uh, frequency encoding gradient. So all these three gradient are applied to select the slice to select to address the MR signal to a particular slice. I mean which how does the MR signal know where from this signal is coming from. So this is done by applying the gradient uh, uh, pulses along uh, along the, the different directions to select the slices into uh, different uh, directions. Like in case of transverse axial slice the gradient is applied along z axis to select the slice along uh, transverse axial plane by applying the gradient along z axis and then this slice is cut into, uh, into rows by applying phase encoding gradient and then the slice is cut into uh, columns by applying frequency encoding gradient. Now you can see uh, the information uh, of each phase and frequency is encoded into the signal. For acquiring a matrix of data element it is thus the finally required to collect a series of uh, points in the presence of readout gradient which is called a frequency encoding gradient that encodes the frequency of signal and produces a series of spatially encoded data points. Following Fourier transformation, this Fourier transformation is an image processing tool which is used to uh, you know in the in terms of sine and cosine functions each data point contains phase and frequency information from whole slice at a particular time during which readout frequency amplitudes are represented in time domain the fast Fourier transformation mathematically converts the frequency amplitude into frequency domain. This is necessary because gradient spatially locate signal according to their frequency and not according to their time. The Fourier transform plane of the acquired signal intensity pattern each at different spatial frequency which is inverse of Fourier transformation. Thus Fourier transform to yield the image. In the MR image formation there is a temporary image space called K space usually a matrix in which data 
of or in the form of digital MR signal is this temporally stored. When K space is full at the end of the scan, the data sets are mathematically processed to produce a final image. Signal corresponding to low spatial frequencies are concentrated near the origin of K space. Information about the high spatial frequencies is spread further away from the origin. The manner in which data at every point in the K space contributes to the image depends upon its location. Fourier transform plane or K space point at the edge of the Fourier space determine image resolution while those towards the center contributes to image contrast. We can see here the Fourier transformation images you can see how the frequency is encoded uh, on frequency domain and the frequencies these information are stored in the K space and these uh, information are utilized to reconstruct the image. You can see here in this the uh, the, the patient uh, uh, the image of the uh, head uh, scan is reconstructed uh, 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 from K space to uh, data space and then this data space is data uh, is uh, converted back into the analog signal and which is represented in the grayscale images. So this is how we can see here this uh, uh, first of all I told you that uh, the MR signal is generated by hydrogen nuclei and uh, these hydrogen nuclei uh, are uh, excited by the RF pulse and uh, that is what is called the resonance at the resonance the nuclei are excited uh, and then when uh, relaxation occur the hydrogen nuclei are uh, le losing their phase coherence and therefore uh, that is what is called T2 relaxation time and when the nuclei which were excited from low energy state to high energy state coming back to their original state and uh, this uh, uh, is called the T, T1 relaxation time. Now coming to the basic pulse sequence. Basic pulse sequence means it is the spin echo pulse sequence. In spin echo pulse sequence as you can see in this figure first of all uh, the 90 DRF pulse is used. What does this 90 DRF pulse do is that this 90 DRF pulse completely uh, you know uh, brings the uh, longitudinal magnetization towards the transverse plane and uh, uh, then uh, subsequently 180 DRF pulse are used. So there are two factor one is the TR time between two successive 90 DRF pulse determines how much longitudinal relaxation time will occur before constructing the next rows of image. TE TE is the time between the peak of 90 DRF pulse and peak of echo that is formed. The spin echo as I told you a 90 DRF pulse that were in phase begins to deface in the transverse plane after a certain amount of time if a 180 DRF pulse is applied the spin will rotate over to the opposite axis now rather than the spin contributing to deface the spins will begin to reface and the spins which come back together after some time and uh, this is the signal is measured at this point of time with the receiver coil will increase from a maximum signal and then decrease at the spin once again deface at this time one uh, one at rf pulse uh, could be applied to rephase the spins again. So, rephasing of spin turns forms an echo called uh, the entire uh, sequence called a spin echo pulse sequence. You can see the pulse sequence uh, 90 DRF pulse is first applied then 180 DRF pulse is applied. Now another sequence is called inversion recovery pulse sequence. In inversion recovery pulse sequence as you can see the name itself implies we have two uh, type of inversion recovery pulse sequence one is called STIR short tau inversion recovery pulse sequence and uh, flare fluid attenuated recovery pulse sequence herein 180 DRF pulse causes an initial inversion of longitudinal magnetization 
the magnetization then begins to grow back in the direction of main magnetic field and uh, by, by applying one atomic area pulse. The magnetization of different tissues will grow back at different rates. When signal form from the tissues to be suppressed crosses the zero axis, then applying 90 RF pulse will rotate all the signal into the transverse plane since the signal from tissue at zero point is zero and therefore uh, there is nothing to rotate into the transverse plane this way uh, the tissue will be uh, specifically uh, you know, uh, uh, suppressed from the image. This will not in, uh, contribute to any uh, signal brightness on the signal. Uh, the acquisition parameter in this case is the, the time between uh, applying application of 180 VRF pulse and 90 VRF pulse is known as time of inversion and after 90 VRF pulse uh, you can see it is a spin echo pulse sequence and uh, uh, again the signal is uh, dephasing and then rephasing and the uh, this uh, rephasing uh, at that point of time echo is generated MR signal are uh, detected. So this detection of MR signal uh, is utilized to generate the image in a different uh, the different tissue parameter. We call, call it as STIR. STIR is the short time of inversion recovery pulse sequence. Here what you, uh, STIR means it is the uh, time of inversion is very short. For example, uh, let us see uh, the, the STIR if I want to suppress the fat from the image I will use STIR pulse sequence. What happens is that the STIR the time of inversion is usually is 0.693 of T1. For example, uh, in case of fat this time is uh, roughly about uh, 215 to 0.69 sub something about 180 millisecond. For CSF this T1 is very long it is about uh, 2000 millisecond or more and in that case the uh, when uh, SARTI uh, tau inversion recovery pulse sequence is used that means the time of inversion is 180 degree millisecond and in that case at that particular point of time the fat is, uh, is you know uh, passing through zero signal from minus 180 degree to plus 180 degree uh, uh, to zero degree. So this is what is called the return of longitudinal magnetization. Longitudinal magnetization is returning from minus mx uh, minus mz to plus mz through 0. So when uh, for fat for instance if 180 degree uh, or pulse, uh, 180 degree 180 millisecond time of inversion is utilized in that case the fat is passing through 0 signal and at this point of time uh, the uh, 90 degree pulse is applied. On the other hand, the CSF, which has a significant signal but along the uh, minus longitudinal direction, and therefore CSF would be brighter on the image, the fat is darker on the image. You can see fat is uh, normally suppressed from the image. So, this is used for fat suppression technique. On the other hand, if I want to suppress the fat, I will use flare, fluid attenuated inversion recovery pulse sequence. In fluid attenuated inversion recovery pulse sequence, here the time of inversion is longer, much longer. For example, for CSF, this time is about 1500 millisecond. So, in that case, uh, the CSF the, uh, is passing through 0 from minus mz to plus mz whereas the fat has already achieved most of its uh, longitudinal magnetization whereas the uh, CSF is passing through 0 and at this point of time 90 degree of pulse is applied. So what happens is the uh, signal uh, from, fa from fat is very high however signal uh, from uh, the because the uh, longitudinal magnetization for CSF is 0 and when 90 degree pulse is used uh, it does not excite anything and therefore the signal from fat is 0 because when you excite 
the, again uh, the, there is no meaning in uh, excitation and and therefore the signal from uh, uh, from uh, CSF would be zero. Now third is the gradient recall pulse sequence. In GRE pulse sequence, it includes an initial RF pulse which flips the angle of something like less than 90 DRF pulse and the lack of 180 DRF pulse. This is very interesting that there is no 180 DRF pulse. Instead, the smaller flip angle and lack of 180 DRF pulse allows the TR to be much shorter resulting in a very fast imaging time even though there is no 180 DRF pulse is used to produce a spin echo gradient pulse used to deface and reface the signal in the transverse plane to form the gradient echo. In this figure you can see less than uh, first of all less than uh, 90 degree pulse is used which is to slightly flip less than maybe 60 degree is flipped. So in this case both transverse and longitudinal magnetization are present at a time and then uh, magnetic fields are used uh, in one direction. Uh, so, nuclei which were processing uh, 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 in phase they start dephasing and when this magnetic field is reversed the reversing of magnetic field causes these nuclei to rephase. So, this rephasing or dephasing in causes uh, the gradient echo pulse sequence. Now next is the T1 uh, weighted image. How do we get the T1 weighted image? This image is having you know T1 weighted image here. You can see here this is the T1 weighted image. This is achieved by using short TR and short T. E. Short e is 10 to power minus uh, 10, to, uh, 10 to 30 millisecond and long T1 it, uh, you can see in this one the longitudinal uh, T1 weighted image this achieved by using uh, using short ER and short E. Uh, on the other hand T2 weightage image you can see in this figure this has been used by using long TR and long T. So, the tissue having long T2 will produce a more signal as compared to the tissue having short T2. On the other hand on T1 weightage image the tissues having short T1 will be uh, more brighter than the tissues having long uh, T1 for example, fat would be brighter on T1 weighted image on the other hand uh, you know, fat would be darker on T2 weighted image on the other hand CSF would be darker uh, on uh, T1 weighted image and will be brighter on T2 weighted image. So, in this case this is how we get the T1 weighted MS, T2 weighted MS. Now coming to the last section is the system hardware. The main requirement of an um, MRI system as shown in this figure is that main magnets which are uh, very high magnetic field seeing coils and uh, you have the gradient coil, RF coils. So, we have the three uh, main magnetic field. One is the main magnetic field which is in order of 1 tesla to 3 tesla or more than 3 tesla. Then second is the shim coil that are actually uh, used with the main magnetic field uh, to make it more homogeneous. Second is the RF coils. The RF coils are utilized to you know uh, produce uh, to uh, excite uh, the MR signal and then you have the uh, gradient coil that selects the slice and then uh, slice is cut into the rows and then uh, the rows are cut in the columns. So, first of all is the magnet. It is the heart of the MR system for any particular magnetic type performance criteria includes that signal, temporal, stability and fill. Uh, field uh, homogeneity uh, uh, magnets may be permanent resistive coil magnets superconductive coil mostly the superconductive coil are used superconductive is a character, characteristic of certain materials like niobium titanium alloy that when maintained at extremely low temperature uh, exhibit no resistance to electric current superconducting temperature is 4 kelvin that is point minus 269 degree Celsius. To maintain superconductivity, cryogens are used. Liquid helium and light liquid nitrogens are used as a cryogen. Sim coils. Sim coils interact with the main magnetic field to improve the magnetic field homogeneity over the volume of interest. 
uh, used for the patient imaging. The process of making magnetic field homogeneous is known as shimming. It can be achieved by metal disc or plates. Uh, we call it as passive shimming and solenoid uh, called active shimming to make the main magnetic field more homogeneous. Then we have the gradient coils. These are uh, contained within the main bore uh, magnets to produce linear variation of magnetic field strength across the useful magnetic volume and uh, uh, magnetic field gradient is obtained by superimposing the magnetic field of two or more coils carrying a direct current of a specific amplitude and direction. The gradient strength is determined by peak amplitude and the slope of typically ranges from 1 to 50 milli tesla per meter. Third is the RF coils. These RF coils are used to transmit RF pulse as well as to receive the returning signals. Two type of RF pulse are used. One is the RF transmit coil only. In these cases, uh, the RF coils are transmitted. These creates an oscillating secondary magnetic field by passing an alternating current through a uh, uh, loop of wire for excitation and resonance. Created secondary uh, magnetic field, it must be arranged in such a way that it is at right angle to the main magnetic field. Then RF receiver coil. If a loop of wire is exposed to an oscillating magnetic field, a current is induced in the loop. This receiver coil in this way is used to detect MR signal. Fourth is the patient table. All the systems are uh, uses hydraulically or mechanically driven couch to lift patient to the level of bore of imaging system. The tables are comfortable for the patient and allow for the attachment of coils and immobilizing devices. Other uh, components in MR system are computer system, uh, pulse control system and error processor and image processor, hard disk drives for storage of raw data, operator control for user interface. Now summary, uh, to summarize the, this lecture, First of all, I told you that nuclei have intrinsic spinning angular momentum. Nuclei with magnetic moment turn will uh, precess when placed in a strong magnetic field and this precision may be detected by when it is induced by an electric signal in the form of a bar signal which is an oscillating magnetic field. Then Larmor frequency is product of gyromagnetic ratio and B0 which is the main magnetic field. Patient is placed in a strong magnetic field, nuclei establishes a net magnetization along the direction of main magnetic field which is called longitudinal magnetization. This longitudinal magnetization is flipped by using uh, radio frequency pulse to generate the transverse magnetization and then uh, the, after switching off this one relaxation occurs the uh, then uh, here due to uh, loss of phase coherence we get T1 uh, relaxation time and T2 relaxation time 